A newly released US intelligence report claims that Russia interfered in last year's US election in a state-ordered campaign, though it admits there's no solid proof for any of its conclusions. You know, if you have high confidence, you know, that means you don't really know for sure. They should have included at least some evidence of what they're asserting. U.S. government's declassified Russian hacking report has the curious disclaimer that it is based on watching TV and reading tweets. And journalists and former U.S. intelligence officials have mocked the report given its lack of concrete evidence. While President-elect Donald Trump says the election was absolutely not affected by hacking. Also to come this hour in RT, the BBC faces a backlash over a comedy video released online called The Real Housewives of ISIS. We get expert opinion. I think it's amazingly funny, the little bit I've seen. This is a very serious business when there are people sure. using violence to kill innocent people. But why are you getting your knickers in a twist about a bit of comedy? You need to enter the modern world and understand that ridicule, satire, political comedy is important. It's a weapon that can be used in a positive way. You do not understand the environment in which we are operating. Oh. As people within the Muslim community that are at the front line of defeating this ideology and stopping our country from being attacked from terrorism. And that's what it's about. Hello, welcome. You're watching RT International. It's just gone midday here in Moscow. Now, the US intelligence community has accused Russia and Vladimir Putin personally of meddling in last year's US presidential election through hacking and propaganda. The long-awaited report does say that Putin ordered a campaign to influence the course of the election. According to the document, too, the goal was to undermine public faith in the U.S. democratic process, also to uh, denigrate Hillary Clinton and to help Donald Trump's election chances. And to achieve this, Russia allegedly resorted to various cyber activities, overt efforts, too, uh, and as well as funding media and paid social media users known as trolls. Well, despite such accusations, the document does state that it's final judgments do not imply that there is any evidence nor does it uh, prove anything to be a fact. RT is also directly targeted for allegedly taking the side of Donald Trump as if that would be a crime. With more, here's Caleb Moppin. Finally, the intelligence community was going to release the information proving that Russia intervened in the elections and secured a victory for Donald Trump. Well, this new report lacks something rather important, real solid evidence. In fact, it even comes with a disclaimer that the sources used cannot be fully trusted. Intelligence officials have, quote, high confidence in these sources, but stipulate that high confidence doesn't actually constitute fact or certainty. And not all agencies even subscribe to that. The NSA, for instance, says that they only have moderate confidence here. You know, if you have high confidence, you know, that means you don't really know for sure. They should have included at least some evidence of what they're asserting, uh, and they haven't done any of that. They're making these kinds of decisions now without fundamentally finding out what really is true and what the facts basically are. And they're not really focusing on facts or truth. They're, they're, talk, they're basically looking at speculation, uh, fabrication, and uh, hyperbole, basically. Much of this report into hacking doesn't deal with computer hackers at all, but instead focuses on this channel, RT. Seven pages of the report look for some sinister hidden agenda in RT's reporting, aiming to influence politics and fuel discontent. So what is one of RT's nefarious covert activities? Changing the logo to, quote, not scare the audience, and seeking to raise its viewing numbers by being big on social media. To blame RT for carrying that information is like telling any newspaper that it shouldn't uh, follow the scandals. The case being made against RT is spurious. And it, and it frankly is, again, this whole concept of this administration and of the Clinton campaign and of the, of the State Department is they do not want to accept responsibility for the outcomes uh, based on their actions. We've heard it all before. Yes, because RT's web team can tweet a little bit faster than the folks at WikiLeaks, this proves that somehow they're all part of a big conspiracy together taking direct orders from Putin. 
Another one of RT's big crimes was staging third party presidential debates to highlight lesser known candidates. Oddly, CNN had town hall events with the Green and Libertarian Party candidates also. Are they also in on the plot? Joining us now is the Libertarian presidential nominee, Governor Gary Johnson from New Mexico, and his running mate, Governor William Will from Massachusetts. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Well, what an opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Many Democrats looking forward to nominating Hillary Clinton to become the first woman president. Clinton is not the only woman in the race. So, Dr. Jill Stein. Remember how the intelligence officials don't fully trust their sources? Well, they should, because when it comes to accusing RT of being so closely tied to Russia's foreign policy apparatus that its people head RT departments, their information is almost a decade old. None of these people occupy these posts. Back to hacking now, what the report is actually supposed to be about. It shows that no tampering with voting machines or vote counting took place, but insists that Russia was involved because somehow it influenced people's minds. Remember back in 2014 when the U.S. ambassador was caught on the phone personally selecting the new president of Ukraine? I think Yats is the guy who's got the economic experience, the governing experience. He's, he's the guy, you know, what he needs is Cleach and Tony Book on the outside. He needs to be talking to them four times a week. That's not the same as some quasi-government trolls who tweet and post on web forums, right? Now, the report that's available is only the declassified version. This leaves the public assuming that smoking gun evidence is in the classified version of the report. But Donald Trump has met with the intelligence community, seen classified materials, and he's still not convinced. This has the American people asking, if there's proof, why can't we just see it? And is there any? Caleb Maupin, RT, New York. Well, that lack of evidence has prompted a number of journalists to mock the document. Is it just me, or does the report look like something a few journalists compiled over a couple of days, not serious intel agencies over months? It's shocking how much this report was hyped, how literally no effort was made to include any evidence at all. The intel report on Russia is little more than a collection of assertions. Understand protecting sources, methods, but it's weak. U.S. government's declassified Russian hacking report has the curious disclaimer that it is based on watching TV and reading tweets. There is no fact underlying this. There are analytical assumptions. And you can tell that because whenever they use the language like, we assess that, or we believe that, or it is likely that, well, that means they don't know. Because if you knew, you could say, according to SIGINT, according to a human source. And you can clean it up to release it in public. You can just say, according to multiple sources. We know that, boom, you state facts. This thing is an embarrassment. It's a joke. There's no new evidence, and the evidence that has been shown is not, has, does not connect uh, the, the hacking to any intelligence agency. It is pure speculation. I think that there, this deserves a deeper investigation because based upon invalid assumptions and lack of proof, they have created international, uh, strained international relations between the U.S. and Russia. So instead of uh, presenting solid facts, members of the committee gave assessments based on different levels of confidence. But what does that mean? Well, a high level of confidence does not imply that the assessment is a fact, and in some cases they have only a moderate level of confidence, which says the information is even less credible and might even be wrong. Ironically enough, the NSA itself has only a moderate level of confidence in the report's findings. Virginia State Senator Richard Black weighs in now on the meaning behind the wording of the report. Well, I think Donald Trump pointed out that uh, they had a very high level of confidence that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Later on, um, President Bush was forced to say publicly on national television that we were wrong, that there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. So. High level of confidence, uh, you know, means that, yeah, it, it, it probably happened, but it doesn't mean that it did happen. Uh, it, you know, and they have admitted there is no single intercept that was a smoking gun. In other words, there was no absolute proof. And in fact, it troubled me that they, that they relied on the fact that they, you know, they detected that, uh, that the inner circle in Russia was very pleased that Trump was elected president. Well, I was very pleased that Trump was elected president, so I'm not sure. Am I guilty of hacking because of that? 
uh, I, I find that to be no proof whatsoever. And it's, it's troubling that uh, an intelligence agency would rely on that as, uh, as proof. Well, despite the report itself clearly admitting that there is no proof, the mainstream media have already jumped the gun and backed the allegations. There's no room for questioning the evidence that has been presented that makes very clear that they deliberately conducted uh, this effort. They were trying to more disrupt their actions, and that's uh, their strategy all around the globe. It's just to blur the picture. Massive interference in American elections, trying to denigrate Hillary Clinton. Vladimir Putin personally was involved in this. B, that the hack was directed to advantage Donald Trump himself rather than to just sow chaos. Uh, well, actually, the technique that they're using is repetition uh, from multiple directions. Uh, they're using the, the U.S. mainstream media, which simply regurgitates what they say. They're using different members of Congress and different members of the administration, agency heads, all to say the same thing. Here's how you win a war or win an argument, uh, whether, regardless of whether or not you have a valid syllogism or argument. You simply repeat it over and over again until it gets believed. I mean, that's fundamentally what our founding principles are. We question everything the government does. That's in the First Amendment. Our, our mainstream media is supposed to do that. So, but they're not. They, they're, uh, they, they, they're ignoring that. The reality is that we're seeing uh, a degree of subjectiveness in the U.S. media uh, and political circles, which we have never, ever seen before. Well, journalistic standards in the U.S., and I, I venture to say globally, are declining dramatically. We are seeing far more subjective journalism uh, portrayed as news reporting than ever before. Uh, We're seeing a far greater use of adjectives, a far greater use of loaded terminology uh, than we've ever seen. There's, a, uh, there's uh, far less real investigative work to verify uh, material than, than I've ever seen in my career. Uh, I, I would say that there's hardly a journalist on the mainstream media today uh, in the US, for that matter in Australia or Britain, that, that I would hire uh, to, to do an objective analytical uh, job of work. Meanwhile, following Donald Trump's meeting with the intelligence community, he still believes there was no influence on the election results. Trump acknowledged countries like Russia and China are trying to break U.S. cyber infrastructure, but didn't play a role in who became president. He says he will deal with the problem when he takes office. His concern, though, is that uh, the issue has become part of public conversation. Trump doesn't think that politicians should be debating this and believes it should be done with confidentiality. Uh, here's Virginia State Senator Richard Black again. To me, it's kind of a non-story that was hyped up by the Obama administration. And also, you're starting to see some collision between Trump and the intelligence agencies. The intelligence agencies have been almost a government unto, unto themselves. And I think for the first time, they're saying that perhaps they're going to have a president who is going to question what they're doing a little bit more thoroughly. I think that's always a healthy thing. I'm not saying everything that they do is bad or incompetent. Clearly, they are a bloated, bloated uh, organization. Uh, many, many, many facets to the intelligence departments in Washington. They need to slim them down severely, I think. They'd probably make them more efficient, and they'd probably come out with better products. But uh, in any event, I, I think Trump put it pretty well. He said, he said, this is over. He said, we need to move on to other things. And the other thing that we need to move on to, it is absolutely vital to world peace that we begin to forge a new relationship with Russia. And we need to back away from uh, a possible nuclear war. Uh, we have been moving closer and closer to the limits. It is not worth it. And I think uh, President-elect uh, uh, President Trump understands this, and I think he's going to try to forge a much, much more powerful relationship between the two countries.